page 63 in your literature book, please. Yes, Harriet, tell you, see your WhatsApp. Ah, yes, I, I, uh, I saw. Okay. It's going to start the new chapter. Yes. Uh, are you with me, girls? Yeah. Miss, okay. can you yes. make a force higher? Okay. okay, this. Okay, uh, chapter four girls analyzing rhetoric. Uh, what is rhetoric? Uh, what, rhetoric is when you want to write something to convince others. Okay, to convince or influence on the others' opinions. Before we go to the chapter, let's meet some vocabulary, uh, academic vocabulary, and we agreed that you see the academic vocabulary in this blue box in, in this page. You see it or not, girls? Preview academic vocabulary. You, do you see it? Search page 63. Yeah, I saw the box. This academic vocabulary that you have to to know through or to learn through the chapter. Okay, our uh, excerpt this time is prospectus for deliberator. Prospectus for deliberator, and we will know what does it mean later. But before we go to the excerpt, we will meet some academic vocabulary. Figurative. Language yesterday or the day before yesterday, we were reading together, write something, and uh, someone asked me what is figurative language. Or not in grade yes. eleven, maybe. Yes, Maya. Yes, I remember. So, Maya asked me what is figurative language. Figurative language is to use simile. Simile is when I compare two things. Okay, when I compare two things, using as or like. Are you with me, girls? Using as or like. And as then I have a metaphor. Metaphor is a phrase describing something, okay, which is not reality. It means I take two things, I compare them together, and I don't use as or like. So when I say her face was as red as tomato, it's what? It's simile as her 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 eyes were like uh, the bear's bear's eyes simile a metaphor when i say her what her uh, tomatoes tomato face her tomato reddish face directly i say that okay like when i say love is a battlefield of course love is not a battlefield but when I say love is a battlefield, it's a metaphor. You understand, girls? Yes. Then we have hyperbole. Hyperbole is to exaggerate the meaning of a, sen of a sentence. When I say my granddad is as old as time, of course he's not as old as time, but I'm exaggerating it. Okay, it's hyperbole. Hyperbole here, the last one, hyperbole. Oxymoron is a term which features two words which appear to contract each other. That woman is pretty ugly. Pretty ugly is oxymoron. Okay, she is ugly or pretty here, girls? I mean, she is ugly. Teacher? Yes. Um, the last example, can it work as a simile too? Yes. Yes, okay. because there is as or like. As long as there is as or like, it's a simile. Oxymoron is pretty ugly and a lot of other examples. OK, so I'm just introducing you. What is figurative language? And you've taken simile and metaphor before, right? Yes. 
And you took hyperbole before, but you didn't know that this is called hyperbole. Hyperbole is to exaggerate what you say. Okay. Then we have influence. Influence is how can you affect on the character development or affect on behavior of someone or something. Effect itself is influence. Sometimes when we say, I don't want my son to go out with these friends because they badly influence him. They have a bad effect on him. Understand? No. So we took now what figurative language? We took influence and we will take now purpose for writing. What, what is the purpose for writing? Purpose for writing is why, why am I writing this? And there is nothing in the word written for no reason. Even advertisements are written for reasons. When you read, take a break, take a Kit Kat, it's a what? It's an advertisement. Why it is written? To influence on the people, to influence people, to trigger people to eat chocolate. This Kit Kat. So a writer's or speaker's reason for writing or speakers is purpose for writing. Then, okay, the last thing is rhetoric. Rhetoric, rhetoric is the last one. So now you understand figurative language, influence and purpose for authors for, uh, for writing? Yes. Authors or speaker for writing, why are, are they writing this? Yes. Yes. We go to rhetoric. Rhetoric is the ability to see all the available means of persuasion. It's written by Aristotle. Aristotle is a, a Roman thinking thinker. The art of writing or speaking to audience to persuade to persuade them. Anything written to persuade the person in front of you is called rhetoric. Rhetoric. This chapter will take analyzing rhetoric. What's analyzing rhetoric, teacher? Analyzing how can I affect on others? Can I have an influence on others? Like what? Like persuasive essays. Okay. Rhetoric is the way of writing or speaking, because both are the same, I write or I talk, to an audience persuasively. I want to persuade them, okay, with my opinion, of course. Analyzing rhetoric. So we, in this chapter, we will analyze how can we influence others. Rhetoric devices. Rhetoric devices are called the influence, to influence others' devices. OK? Yes. So here uh, in page 63, Serene, read your Serene. Think about uh, the preview concept. Serene, Batul, are you here, Batul? Yes, miss. Yes. Read page 63. Mm -hmm. Good uh... Analyzing this old. 63, yes, analyzing rhetoric. Yes, yeah, but Analyzing the tech. Could you com uh, concepts think about an agreement people might have made for an, and against uh, slavery? What reasons would they have given their uh, viewpoint? Write a response below. If we are writing an argument, argument is when you quarrel but with words. You have an opinion, your friend has an opinion, and you argue together. Argument. 
not a fight. Okay, you argue together. Okay, what is an argument? Think about an argument people might have been made, have made for and against slavery. If you are with slavery, if you are against slavery, what are you going to say, girls? Again, if you are. Serena is telling you that her mic is not working. Who? Serene. Okay. So, girls, if you are with the slavery, if you are against the slavery, what are the things you're going to say when you are with slavery? What are the things you're going to say when you are against the slavery? If I'm with slavery, I'm going to say that those people do not have rights. They belong to me as a property. Yes, so these they don't have rights. They belong to me as property. They are my property. Huh? Miss, we can see the PowerPoint. Yes, because we are discussing, just discussing that. And number if three? I'm against slavery, it will be the opposite. That the, wait, let's them. finish first with slavery. So now, girls, Dima said two points, that they do, are, have no rights and that they are their property. What else? We have free workers. Yani the, yeah. the slaved ones, they can work for them for free. Yeah, yes, they are their uh, free workers, yes. They help us to earn for living. Yes. What else? It's their way of life. Yes, excellent. This is a very important point. This is what we are used to. This is how we were born. This is what, this is our lives. You want to change our lives, why? Yes. What else? With slavery? Property? Have no rights? This is what are we used to, and they help us earn our lives or uh, help us live. If you are against slavery, against slavery, what are you I going to say? For their rights, and Nancy. Talk, yes, say. And say that their own people, they they are their own people. They have rights to make and choices. They have rights to make and choices. And um, what else? and that they're being forced, and this is like inhumane. Yeah. Yes, who's talking? Hello, Jane. Jane, they are being forced, and it's inhuman. And uh, we are all equal in front of God. Yes. Yeah. Allah has created all of us equal. And. And like they're not our property to, you know, we have to get used to a new way of life. You can't stay on the same time. Yes, we have to get used to a new way of life. You cannot stuck to the same way. Okay, so these are the thoughts that you are going to say if you are with the slavery or again is the slavery. Okay, so turn the page first, go to page 64, making connection. Uh, what are we going to, to read now? Uh, let's read it first and then I will tell you the story of, uh, of it. Okay. Uh, who's here? Okay. Jane, can you read please? Yes. Um, read this one. Sorry. But the tolerator of slavery will say, no doubt the system is, is an evil. But we are not to blame for it. We received it from our English ancestors. It is lamentable. It is a lamentable necessity. We cannot do it away if we would. Insurrections would be the inevitable result of any attempt to remove it. And having quieted their conscious, their con, their conscious, their, wait, their consciences, yeah. by the use of the word lamentable, they think no more upon the subject. These assertions have been so often and so dogmatically repeated 
that's many truly kind-hearted people have there was there was some truth in them i repeat may god forgive me for it have often uh, i myself may god have forgiven me for it uh, have often in thoughtless ignorance made the same remarks an impartial and careful examination has led me to the conviction that slavery causes insurrections while emancipation prevents them yes an appeal in favor of that class of american called africans by lydia maria child let's go to our powerpoint okay uh, before we go uh, to lydia there's one something i want to say rhetoric in rhetoric when we want to analyze rhetoric we will analyze this ethos pathos pathos ethos logos why they are said like this because these are latin words they mean audience writer and context we have to understand the audience am i talking to i am talking to them the writer this is and the context like the three angles of the rectangle to form a rectangle we should have three angles right pathos ethos and logos we will take them later but you have to to be introduced to them. You understand me, girls? To form a rhetoric, you need a writer, context, and audience. Ethos, logos, pathos. Are you with me? You see my PowerPoint yes. or not? Yes. 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 Okay. Now, this is it. Uh, we will talk about an appeal. What we read now is a very small paragraph from an appeal in favor of that class of Americans called Africans. Lydia Maria Child. Okay, who is Lydia Maria Child? This is Lydia Maria Child, this woman. Okay, and uh, uh, it is a book published in, uh, or written in 1833, written by Lydia Maria Child in favor of the immediate emancipation. Emancipation is the freedom. Or to let them free of slaves without compensation. What is what is compensation? When I take when I, if I take uh, if I borrow your uh, earbuds, for example, and something bad happened to it, so I will take it and then I will compensate you. I will give you money in. A so she wants to end slavery without compensation to slaveholders. We will not compensate the slaveholders. We will not give them any money or anything to compensate them for their loss compensation is usually given for for the sake of loss so it is the first book in support of this policy and you can see from the picture she is white or black she's a white yeah, woman well, a white woman who refused uh, uh, slavery okay when we were discussing the reasons now, if you are with the slavery or against the slavery, Dima said that's what we are used to. So the important question, have you ever heard anyone saying this is what we have always done it that way? Yes. Huh? This all the, until now, by the way, about traditions and like that, even though the traditions will be like a very stupid thing, you know? Yes. It's like uh, as if our uh, grand, 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 grandfather telling us to do something and we know that it's strong and we are still doing it, even though yes. we have our brains to think about it. Yes, because this is what we have huh? always yeah. done it so, that way. Yes, we have been raised this way. We have been taught this way. So uh, why? What would, why would we not. change? Yeah. Huh? Yes, a lot of times and it will be wrong. Yes. The idea of it will be very wrong. Yes. So, uh, Lydia was an example for, we have always done it that way? No, she was against that. Yes. And she, as a white woman, she decided to participate in uh, freeing slaves. So this is Lydia, and what we read now is a part of from uh, the book that I showed you, an appeal in favor of that class of Americans called Africans. Okay, 
So again, I will uh, because it has some hard or unfamiliar words. I will say them for you. So she says, but the tolerate tolerate is what tolerate uh, to to support or to uh, tolerate something to handle it to endure it to deal with it. Okay, to have patience for this. But the tolerant of slavery. So this who want the slave to continue will say no doubt no doubt the system is an evil they admit the system is evil again now with which side we are going to talk she says those who are with slavery no doubt the system is evil we know that this system is an evil but we are not to blame for why are you blaming us? Why do you want us to change? We received it from our English ancestors because we know that the United States is a land consisted of immigrants, a land of immigrants. So those immigrants came from where? From Europe. Okay, basically from England. So this is how we found our English ancestors. It is lamentable. Lamentable is sorrowful. Sorrowful. Okay, a sorrowful. This is a lamentable necessity, a sorrowful necessity. I, I know, we know that slaving, uh, uh, holding slaves are not good, are not humane, but this is how is it. We cannot do it away if we would. Insurrections are, uh, uh, means a rebellion. So in order to rebel for the slave, for, for holding slaves would be the inevitable. Inevitable is yani you cannot escape of it. Please, if you don't know the, the meaning, write it. These words are so useful. And this year's literature is so helpful, girls, and it will help you a lot, especially if you are taking SAT. So please concentrate if you have any Unfamiliar word, please write it. I can't turn it off. Anyway, inevitable result. The the I cannot escape of result of any attempt to remove it. If you will try to remove the slavery, a rebellion will happen. And having quitted their consensus, what does it mean? It means any results by the use of the word lamentable, lamentable is sorrowful, they think no more upon the subject. They will not think of it. Okay. Are you with me, girls? Yes. Yes. Okay. These assertions, assertion is from the word assure, to, to prove or to assure. Okay. Assuring this assertion have been so often and so dogmatically, dogmatically, uh, dogmatically is uh, anything related to God, related to God, because at that time they were so, uh, you know, they believed in, in God and Christianity and this, so they like to insert the, the, the anything relating to God in their speech, a way to influence audience is to talk to, to their spiritual life, to talk to the spiritual side of, of themselves, a way to persuade audience about anything is to do what girls to persuade or to talk to their spiritual life. Yes. To talk to their spiritual side. Are you with me? Yes. Dogmatically is related to God. And so dogmatically repeated that many truly kind hearted people. Yes, what does it mean? Related to God. Dogmatically. Because again, at that time they were so close to Christianity and to God no, it in the United means States. To God. Yes? It means related to God. Yes. Related to God. Dogmatically repeated, 
that many truly kind hearted people have believed there was some truth in them. I myself, may God forgive me for it, have often in thoughtless ignorance, have I myself, so Lydia's talking, I myself, may God forgive me. So again, related to God. May God forgive me for, for what? For I have often in thoughtless, without thinking, ignorance, ignorance when you don't know anything, made the same remarks. I have said the same remarks. Remarks are notes or talk or, 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 or what you said now. I have also said that and I, I want Allah to forgive me. So she is with, with that opinion or again is that opinion? Against. But she is somehow telling what others might say because a, a good argumentative essay is when you mention what would others think of what is the opposing encounter and mention it in your essay to mention what other people might think of and prove it wrong. So I myself, may Allah forgive me for doing this, have said this remark before. An impartial and careful examination Oh, impartial is close and careful examination. I, 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 I examined the situation again. Has led me to the conviction that slavery, slavery, what causes insurrection? Slavery causes insurrection. While emancipation prevents them. Underline it, please. Underline it, please. So what is the main idea said in this paragraph, girls? That she Hello. that slavery is bad. Yes, the main idea is slavery causes instruction while emancipation prevents them. So the question, read the question, Nirvana. Yes, where? The question under what we read now. Um, what? Why does the author write this excerpt? Does she seek to abolish or continue slavery? Underline lines from the text that support her point of view. Yes, so she is with or against Lean al Against. Yes, Nirvana, excellent. She is against. She is against. So she wants to abolish. Abolish is to end. From it came from the word abolitionist. It's to finish. She wants to abolish or continue slavery. She wants to finish abolish. slavery. Abolish slavery. Underline lines from the text to show me. Lena al Hajj. I want a textual evidence from the text to show you. That she is against the slavery. Lean al Hajj. Judy, I want a line, lines from the paragraph to prove that she is against the slavery, not with slavery. Ayah Hisham. Yes, I'm here. Judy, hi, Judy. Oh, when she says that, she, she, I myself have often in thoughtful, uh, thoughtful, uh, thoughtless ignorance have uh, made the same remarks. Yes. She, she, uh, she's regretting what she said, which means she's against it. Yes. Ayah Banjak, is there another line? We are on page 64. Yeah, but where? The question. Which question is? Who's talking? Aya? Yeah. Your voice is, is away. 
Which question, yeah, yeah. You're not concentrating with us? We are still in the same question. Yes. She's again. Yes, Aya, I want a line from the text to prove that she is against the slavery. Another line, girls, to prove the that she's again. The last mm. line. Last yes. Line. Aya, don't sleep here, Aya. Wake up and thought, uh, focus with us. Ragat. Ragat. Who's not here, girls? Miss? Yes. Miss, what, if, what does emancipation mean? I will tell you. Emancipation, we will let. Uh, take it in, in details, but I will tell you the whole meaning of this. Conviction, conviction that I'm confused now, uh, convinced now, that slavery causes insurrection, insurrection is rebellion. Rebellion, insurrection is rebellion. When people rebel against an opinion. So, yes. insurrection is rebellion. So, slavery causes insurrection while Emancipation, emancipation is to free them. Okay, emancipation. The document that were signed was this, the document that was signed to end the slavery by Abraham Lincoln was called Emancipation Proclamation. Okay. But why does it prevent them? What does it what? Prevent what? Uh, prevent the uh, rebels, the, the rebellion. She wants to say that ending the slavery will make us together. Emancipation is to let the slaves free. When you let someone free, it's emancipation. She wants to say, by letting the slaves free, you are what? You are uh, preventing together. the rebellion. But when you insist to have slaveholders and, and others against slavery, like Northern and Southern, you are causing rebellion. Rebellion is rebellion when people rebel against the, the rule. Okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, girls, we stop here and go for five minutes.